Welcome to CEO Insights. I'm Marilyn De Guzman with InvestingNews.com. I'm speaking with Dre Nelson, CEO of Innovation Mining, a gold producer with an innovative new technology that can be a game changer in the gold extraction process. Welcome, Dwayne. Hi, thanks, Marilyn. So maybe let's start our conversation with just an overview of the company. What's innovation mining and what are the key aspects uh, of the company that you that you would like investors to know about? Sure. Innovation mining was actually started as a as a, a mining company with a very strong um, team with strong mineral background of both the executive team and the board of directors. And um, along the way, we determined that uh, we wanted to explore further alternatives to cyanide because we, you know, we were looking at how do we advance these projects into production quickly. And one of the fastest ways of doing that is finding an alternative to cyanide. Um, and as you may or may not know, 90% of the world's gold is produced using cyanide. And there's really no alternative. So along the way, we actually made a discovery. We have our own chemistry lab here in Vancouver. And we made a discovery of a, of a particular formula that is now producing the same results as cyanide, same recoveries for the same price, but it's non-toxic. And so our, sh- our, our focus shifts from the mining side of the business, of course, more to the technology side. Um, we um, then realized that this market is $2 billion a year, roughly, of, of cyanide being used in gold mining. And there really is no alternative. So, you know, we think it's a fairly uh, important discovery. You know, I think it could be one of the uh, the game changers in the industry. Um, we've spoken with a lot of mining companies. We've just completed, you know, thousands of, of, of tests using the solution on various ores, tailings, even concentrates and are now in discussions with some fairly large size miners that are we're doing ongoing testing on the uh, uh the big question that everybody seems to come up with is you know it just sounds too good to be true and and you know we face that on a, on a daily basis and the only way that you can really overcome that objection is by um continuing to to validate the technology independently and so we've just completed a whole series of tests with sgs labs in vancouver um, and we were hands off. They did all of the testing in house, and they produced almost identical results of the uh, uh, the leach kinetics and the recoveries using our solution versus cyanide. And so that's the initial validation that we're we're now getting back. And so that's really changed a lot for us. And uh, uh, the market is immense, as I said, two billion dollars a year, um, and our solution offers other benefits. It might be the same price as cyanide for the product, but it tends to be much, much more reusable. You know, the reusability quotient is higher than that of cyanide, which helps again, lower the cost. Um, but there's a lot of ancillary cost savings. The cost of insurance for an operating mine using cyanide is extensive. Um, the cost of shipping, handling, um, monitoring, testing. And then of course, there's the site remediation that follows. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, economic reasons why the mines would be shifting from cyanide to our product. But the other side of it is, of course, ESG, you know, social license, you know, uh, offering an environmentally friendly alternative. You know, um, we believe that um, there are many countries around the world that are currently uh, prohibiting the use of cyanide and by providing an, an alternate it can really unlock the value of those deposits in countries where you're not allowed to use cyanide or in certain minerals such as copper gold complexes where cyanide is not effective, sulfide ores where cyanide is not effective, uh, arsenopyrite-based um, concentrates. You know, So th- there's a, a lot of reasons why we feel the industry will adopt this, uh, uh, this disruptive new technology. So let's break this down a little bit, maybe for investors that would not want to know more, want to know more about this technology. Could you provide sort of the science, the chemical? Uh, why is it non-toxic? Like, talk about sure. uh, a little bit more about this technology. Yeah, what's really interesting is we stumbled across this this chemistry that actually mimics the chemical properties of cyanide. And I don't want to get too te- too technical, but essentially, what happens when you're using cyanide or our solution is creates a cyanide gold complex. Uh, ours creates a very similar, very stable complex. And then it's recovered using carbon the same way. And 
that's again from a um, an infrastructure or integration standpoint, it's important to understand that our solution can be swapped out for cyanide without the necessity for massive infrastructure changes that you know other alternatives might uh, might face. There, um, from a chemical standpoint, it is um, very it's very stable, and I think one of the other important aspects of it is the fact that it's stable long term. Like not only is the the gold complex that we produce stable, but just leaving the material, the the solution sitting outside is much more stable. Cyanide tends to, uh, in natural conditions or in in conditions where you're getting rain, if if the cyanide uh, solution drops below a pH of 9.3, you tend to off gas. So you're losing a lot of cyanide. So it becomes unstable. Ours is much more stable in in a natural environment as well. So in a, in, um, you know, an application in a mining application, could you talk about the scale? You've said, um, you've done some, um, tests, uh, and have had received some results on that. What about, uh, scale? Like, how are you addressing, um, its application, you know, as you scale the mining operation? Yeah, that's the interesting part is that all that we're dealing with is water soluble salts, the same way that cyanide is water soluble or, or table salt is water soluble, and so any water-based chemistry like that um, is is that is highly soluble is undoubtedly uh, scalable. So if it works, you know, five grams per liter in one liter, it doesn't matter if that's one liter or a million liters; it's still five grams per liter. So the scalability should not be an issue, and we're not seeing that. We've we've gone from uh, beaker to uh, one kilo column test to one hundred kilo column test to two hundred and fifty kilo. Uh, that leach tests. Um, so we're not seeing any any uh, change in the, um, the, the 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 chemical composition or degradation or any changes in the recovery on scale. Of course, the next big step is um, to test it at a mine site in a in a 100 ton uh, test side by side against cyanide. And so those are the sorts of things that we hope to do after our IPO in, in May June of this year is to push out for commercial scale testing uh, later later this year. So what's, um, uh, you know, let's talk about that. What's the strategy then? So you're testing this. Are you testing this in your own um, production mines? How are you, what's your strategy for commercialization? What we're doing now is we have uh, about 20 different mines that have sent us samples and we're, we're testing all the samples and we will be determining one or more of those samples as, uh, as a candidate for an on-site pilot test. And so what we'll do is we will have a, uh, an outside certification lab work with us on site. We will do those 100 ton side by side tests at that particular mine location. And then that gives us the ability to um, talk uh, the, the world about the uh, commercial application of this, of this, this chemical. So I'm just curious, like with all the, um, you know, the talk about the toxicity of cyanide, why, has there been any alternative done and has there been any alternative that's been presented and why have they not um, succeeded? A lot of people have been trying to find an alternative to cyanide for a long time. It's been around for over 200 years. Um, there's been a lot of attempts. There's really only you know five chemical compounds that can really dissolve gold. Uh, most of them are highly oxidative. You've got bromine, chlorine, iodine. Um, then you've got the uh, thiosulfates, uh, thioreas, and so on. Um, and the biggest problem with them is that they tend to operate in an accelerated oxidated state, which means they'll dissolve gold, but they dissolve everything else. So what about the economic uh, benefits, the economic potential of your, the alternative that you're, uh, you know, presenting to the market? Can you talk about the economics uh, in that regard? Yeah, it's, you know, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, 90% of the world's coal is produced using cyanide. Um, and as, as we made clear there's really no uh, viable alternatives except for what we have what we have developed and what we are developing and, and trying to commercialize but there's two billion dollars worth of cyanide consumed every year and you know and I hate to, to use market penetration numbers but a two percent market penetration would yield some 75 million US in, in revenue per year and with pretty healthy margins as, as well so um there's definitely a, a, a need for this, and there's definitely a, a, a business model that uh, that makes a lot of sense. 
Are there any other upcoming catalysts that our investors uh, should know about? We have an IPO coming out in Q2 of this year. You know, we've raised over $4 million ourselves. Um, I would urge everybody to go to our website, have a look at our team. We have just a tremendous team with lots of successes under our belt. Um, the IPO is coming out. We think that uh, uh, the market's ready for this. The timing is good. You know, we're starting to see some life come back into the markets in Canada. We think it's time for a clean tech alternative. You know, I believe that um, based on the minds that we've spoken to, there will be a rapid adoption of, of this product for new minds, but also those existing minds that are out there. Uh, so we see uh, the IPO coming up. We see uh, a lot of relationship development coming up. We're seeing certification coming up. Uh, and then we're also working with a number of chemical manufacturers. And I think once we've determined who our um, manufacturer, distributor partner is going to be, that's going to be another big milestone. And any other type of certification or pilot scale testing coming up in the next 12 months to 20 months. Certainly a new technology to watch for sure. Thanks again, Dwayne, for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for watching. Join us again next time for another edition of CEO Insights.